Good evening. Say so your see your line. I saw you were alive or dead. Yes. <laughs> well, I was told that. We were joking about this before we <laughs> sat down. We were like, oh, so it's going to be like speed dating. They're going to yeah. sit down. It's going to be two seconds. And we're just going to hand out more yes or no cards. <laughs> check, check by the one, dead or alive. I, I'm told I'm coming back. I don't know in what state I'm going to be in because I did fall out a window. Um, am I going to be all broken, flooded with beach eggs, dead and some dreams? I don't know. But um, I know I'm coming back. I think I'll be able to walk and talk. Um, I know that she will be changed by what happened to her because she's in complete utter shock and I think she doesn't know she can trust her. It's probably going to be a lot harder um, to protect herself, but I don't know. Honestly, I don't know anything because they're writing it. Look at him! How long was it before you knew you were coming back? Was there a time where you didn't know what was going on and you had to receive a phone call? Or I was pretty sure I was coming back, but you never know. I mean, we're on a show where you could always disappear. You know, you're always like a meal away from disappearing. So, it's, yeah, it's exciting that way. I mean, we're all in the same boat. So. <laughs> Um, and what capacity do you think uh, she'd be hell bent on revenge or what happened, or would she blame herself because she didn't see? I think she would probably go in that direction. Women do in general for a lot of guilt. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, she's probably mad at herself, uh, feeling a, lot, a little angry that she also got in the way of the investigation and of them catching him because she was always defending him and protecting him and being so close that if they hurt him they would hurt her as well so they had to really dance around them um, so yeah she, that's what I meant by she's probably going to be a lot harder on, on herself and others maybe or else she would give up and, and be on a beach somewhere for the rest of us, you know so and she's not the type that would give up I don't think um, I was just going to ask, as a Canadian... Are you Canadian? Uh, oh, I am, but you are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Where are you from? I'm originally from uh, Southwest Ontario. Yeah. I live in Vancouver now. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering, is it, is it nice to be able to stay in, yeah. in Toronto, stay in the country, and be on such a great show? Yeah, well, most of what we do is in the city, but we do Will's house, you know, it's 45 minutes away from Toronto. I get to take the train back to Montreal as soon as I can. And, um, sometimes some episodes are heavier for me. Sometimes I only have one or two days of shooting. So, yeah, the train is four hours and 30 minutes, and I use it all the time. Yeah. No, it's great not having to cross the border and, and being close to home, for sure. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, in a season where pretty much every character had a major arc, yours had one of the best ones because you went from innocence to, to knowledge. Ooh. But because of that... Yeah. Yeah. There was a question asked in the panel about how you would, you know, basically be, be with Hannibal, knowing what's going on as an actress. You know, how do you balance that, that knowledge of what everyone else knows versus what you and your character know? Um, I think that's one of the reasons why the show is so interesting. Because the audience always knows more than we do. And it gives them the power to go, no, don't do that. Um, yeah, I mean, we always know more than our characters do anyway as actors, so that's, I guess, a recurring thing that we, we deal with. Yeah. Have I answered your question? I think so. <laughs> Why do you think she was the last to see Hannibal who, like, he really was? Like, because she knew him before she knew anyone else on the show. He was her mentor and her teacher. And also because he's very solid. He's, he's like a rock, you know. Will was so shaky and, and like a roller coaster and, and Jack also is always behaving a little in his own interests all the time. And yeah, I think in comparison with the other characters, he was kind of like a solid boat. And it probably felt really soothing to be around the so, and he's also very good at hiding stuff. <laughs> and he didn't even have to come to her, she went to him. So she couldn't even go, he came to me, he was to do me. She had the idea that the, when they're playing the harpsichord, the chopstick scene, to say, hey, 
we've got each other now. Let's just go for it. He's that brilliant. He just lets the woman come to <laughs> What's it like being in a You've been part of a show before that has this. There's such a large fan base, but then there's such questionability about a next season or being canceled. Yeah. I mean, what is, what is it like for you as an actress to be a part of that? Of a, a show that's coming back? And, no, yeah, well, it might be canceled. You don't know. Yeah, it's always like that, though, on every show, unless it's a big hit like Scandal or Grey's Anatomy <laughs> or something like that. I've always been on shows that were kind of like Wonder Falls, disappeared really quickly. I did Off the Map a couple years ago. We did one season and then it disappeared. So I've gotten used to have no expectations at all, even though it's hard because you you can't enter a project and just be there halfway. You have to give it all and hope for the best. But I've learned to not take it, take it personally and not to have too much hope for a future for the project because usually it's not even about the project. It's about being in the right place at the right moment. You can do your best and, and, and be in the hands of someone who doesn't really believe in the show and all, so many scenarios are possible. And what's interesting with this show is that off the map, for example, I think we had five or six million and we didn't come back and this show had less and we're coming back and the fan base is huge. I think we're basically making a cable show on network and, and it looks amazing. And so we're getting the cable numbers on a network show and I think NBC's probably getting that. And they know that it's been such a critical acclaim. It's good for them to have the show on their network even though the numbers aren't cute. Yeah. Can you talk a bit about uh, working with Matt Mickelson since he's not here and I can't ask him how he worked on the show? <laughs> He seems intense. He's wonderful. He's very passionate about his work. Um, I've never seen him complain about being there, being cool. Uh, and God knows they put him through the ringer. Yes. So he's just a wonderful co-star and a wonderful person to be around. And, and he's the most talented actor right now, I think, of his generation. So just to be working with him is such a blessing. I was a fan of his before I worked on the show. I, I watched a lot of the same films and I couldn't believe my luck when I heard that I would be working with him. Did you see the lunch? I did see the lunch, yeah. I saw it at the film fest in Toronto and they gave a Q&A after him and the director and the other actors. <laughs> They're very smart people, the people who cool. It was really nice to hear them talk about the film. Yeah. Yeah, he was amazing. He's always amazing. I've never seen him on He's always spot on. And what really amazes me is how you can read every thought that he has yeah. when he's in character. You see every shift in his, in his mind, and that's very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to bite the side of the Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.